today we are going to learn about a very basic property of all the elements now let's discover what's today's topic there was a scientist called john dalton who once gave the atomic theory and in his theory he explained about the atomic mass of elements he said that each element has characteristic atomic mass now once this discovery was done and the atomic theory was widely accepted then every scientist started to measure the atomic mass so a lot of scientists started experimenting on atomic mass how to measure it but it was not that easy there were a lot of problems so what major problems came up let's see atoms are very small particles so they are so small that it's very difficult for us to see with our naked eyes so we need electron microscopes to see the particles to see the atoms and to measure the mass even becomes more difficult that's because the mass or weight of atoms are extremely small and when you express these extremely small mass then it becomes difficult for calculation also so there were some few problems which came up during calculation of atomic mass so after some time some scientists came up with an idea of measuring the relative atomic mass instead of atomic mass they wanted to measure the relative atomic mass so atomic mass relative to a standard so let's see what exactly is the definition of relative atomic mass the atomic weight or mass of an element is a number which indicates how many times heavier the atom is in comparison to an atom of another element taken as standard so here you can see there is this standard which is mentioned so you have to take another element which is taken as a standard so what are the other elements which were taken as standard first element was hydrogen which was selected to be a standard element then we also had oxygen and also carbon so these were the three elements which were taken as the standard for the measurement of atomic mass now depending on these three elements we also had three different scales of measurement of atomic mass so what are the scales we have hydrogen scale in which hydrogen is the standard element then we have oxygen scale and we have carbon scale so depending on the standard elements we have these three different scales and we are going to see how the scales work and what is the formula which is used in these scales so first we'll discuss about the hydrogen scale now in hydrogen scale as we know that hydrogen atom is taken as the standard so mass of one hydrogen atom is taken as standard and we are going to take another element and we are going to see how much heavier is the element from one atom of hydrogen so the formula is atomic mass of an element which is equal to mass of one atom of the element that we have taken for measurement and we divide it by mass of one atom of hydrogen this is an example in which you can see i have some hydrogen atoms on one side and one carbon atom on this side now if you look at the diagram you can see that they are balanced which means i can say that i have almost around 12 hydrogen atoms on this side and one carbon atom on this side so one carbon atom is 12 times heavier than
वन हाइड्रोजन आइटम ऑल राइट सो वी कैन से वन कार्बन आइटम इज ट्वेल्व टाइम्स हेवियर दैन वन हाइड्रोजन आइटम सो द अटोमिक मास ऑफ कार्बन बिकम्स ट्वेल्व दिस बिकम्स द अटोमिक मास ऑफ कार्बन इन द सेम वे इफ यू विल सी ऑक्सीजन is 16 times heavier than hydrogen atom which means the atomic mass of oxygen is 16 so this is how we calculate the atomic mass taking hydrogen atom as a standard element now let's see what other standard elements we have taken so the other scale is oxygen scale and how do we calculate the mass of an atom we take the mass of one atom of the element and we divide it by mass of 1/16th of an atom of oxygen now let's say that this is an atom of oxygen and i have divided the atom of oxygen into 16 equal parts now let's count and see if we really have 16 parts or not I'll start counting from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. So here I have divided the oxygen atom into sixteen equal parts. and if i take one part out of the 16 parts then that is going to be 1/16th of one atom of oxygen so i am just going to take this part and its mass and this is going to be here in this denominator this mass is going to be here in the denominator so this is how oxygen scale is used now there is the most accepted scale that we follow till date which is the carbon scale carbon scale also has the same formula instead of 1/16th we have 1/12th of an atom of carbon so it says that mass of one atom of the element divided by mass of 1/12th of atom of carbon so let's say this is an atom of carbon which i have divided into 12 equal parts now let me see if i really have 12 equal parts 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so i have 12 equal parts now then what happens I have just removed one part of it, and that one part is the one twelfth of mass of one atom. So when we have this formula, then we have to take the mass of this one part and use it here in the denominator. Now let's see some of the examples. so here you can see i have taken 1/12 of carbon one atom of carbon and on this side i have one hydrogen atom and you can see that their masses are equal so i can say that 12 is the mass of carbon and 1/12 of the mass of carbon is equal to 12 divided by 12 that is equal to 1 so atomic mass of hydrogen is equal to 1 so this is how we calculate the atomic mass let's see another example here i have two atoms of carbon and 
one atom of magnesium. So you can see that two atoms of carbon balances one atom of magnesium. So let's find out what will be the mass of two atoms of carbon. So we know that atomic mass of carbon is 12. So when we have two atoms, then we are going to add 12 plus 12, which is equal to 24. So we can say that 24 is the atomic mass of magnesium. of magnesium. I hope these examples are a bit clear for you. Then these atomic masses are always mentioned in the periodic table. So here is a small form of periodic table in which at the bottom these are the atomic masses which are given for every element. So we must remember these atomic masses by looking at the periodic table at least till atomic number 30 which is very very required and when you go for the higher elements then the atomic mass will be given to you when you do the numericals. Now let's have a quiz time. I am going to give you 5 elements for which you have to write the atomic masses so, sodium aluminium chlorine oxygen neon so you can take some time and see if you know the atomic masses and if you don't know then you can refer to the periodic table want to know the answers Okay, let me tell you the answers. The atomic mass of sodium is 23, aluminium is 27, chlorine is 35.5, oxygen is 16, neon is 20. So like this, you can go through the periodic table and try to remember few of the atomic masses. I hope the concept of atomic mass is a bit clear for you now and the session was helpful and informative for you. Thank you for watching it.